finding the damn theme song for the show. you in our coven and if you want a family we'll put one in your oven which one switch each other like some feral creatures i hear there's trouble brewing with the voodons and the wiccans they're sacrificing values instead of little chickens and some folks scan the new age kids because they're easy pickings a bunch of pagan characters right out of charles dickens but i thought being pagan meant we all should get along and that every path has value and there is no right or wrong but every time there's power there are always those who grab it some wit comes along and takes a whack at Lord and Cabot. Some other fool shoots back like Elmo Fudd out hunting wabbits. They end up coming off like Lou Costello and Bud Abbott. Which one? Kitch score? Which one? Niche de jour? Which one? Switch more? You know I ain't no carnivore, ain't got stomach for a witch war. I know a couple women who were married to each other And they were polyamorous and soon they found another And then a jealous friend of the third woman's exes Started raising bad juju and casting nasty hexes So everyone found out just what power over sex is Ripping at each other like Tyrannosaurus Rexes So free from harm must only be the law 
And if you've got a problem with that sticking in your craw, then maybe you're a power monger trying hard to squeeze us. And you will not be welcome here until your witch war ceases. And everybody must be free to do as he, she pleases. No matter if they follow Satan, Buddha, Bob, or Jesus. Witch war! Witch war! Witch war! Snitch war! Witch war! Raptors in a witch war Witch war Are you a big predator? Witch war Tell me what's it all for Witch war Hey, who's minding the store? I can't take it anymore Better quit it with your witch war
Good religion on Wittershins Radio. Wittershins. Radio for your spiritual side. A twisted approach to the left-hand path. And that was a double shot of bad religion because they have so many songs, and generations of songs that speak to our troubled times. And before that, we had a double shot from Manwich. From the Derek Halmore Orchestra, the Wittershins theme song and... The, the, the cover of Witch Wars, which is originally from a low-key coyote, and probably nobody knows the fucking song anymore except for me. And uh, we, we put it in our lineup, and we played it on the air, and he said, hey, I want to I wanna, um, I wanna cover that song. And I said, D- do something punky. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even have that British accent that he was doing right there. Yeah. You can tell because he did the Widdersons thing too, so it was like a double shot. But I was just thinking before we get into all this stuff, it's like, uh, the stuff, I, I saw the image of it. Um, I need to find it again. There's this documentary that I saw on, on YouTube, and it was like something like, my dad is a, a punk rock star. And mm. it's like the dude from yeah. Bad Religion's kid okay. who goes on tour with them. And okay. it's like, you know, it's like, they like, remember... When we saw Bad Religion in, in Santa Cruz that time, and yeah, uh, there was, you know, we were on the edge of the pit because it was, it was just too crazy. It was like, mm-hmm. a, I think it was like an all ages show or something yeah, like that. Yeah, one of the bigger shows yeah. there, all ages. And I saw, the, 16 and up. I saw this kid being trampled in the pit, and I reached in and I grabbed this kid and pulled her out. And I was like, Allie? This kid I'd known since she was three years fucking old is getting trampled the pit right before me. I pull her fucking out. Aww. And it's like, it's like I've been listening to Bad Religion most of my life. And mm-hmm. so like, they had whole new generations. There's all these kids. There's like, like, like these things, like right here, these are albums that most of the old school punks don't even know about. Yeah. The Bad Religion is just still going. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of, uh, a, a lot of my favorite punk bands were still touring and we got to see them back in Santa Cruz and stuff. But they, most of them weren't putting out new albums or nobody cared about their new albums if they were putting them out, like TSOL. Mm-hmm. You know, they put out other albums, but nobody wanted to hear that shit. It's like, see, yeah. play, play Superficial Love and Code Blue and shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, but Bad Religion's just been kicking out albums. And that, so the, those, of course, are from when their most recent album, and that's why they sound so topical, of course. But then there's, you know, Low Key Coyotes' song redone by uh, uh, the Derek Helmore Orchestra. It's like always topical in our world. Yep. And finally, you know, we have time to talk about that. You know, we we don't have crazy Trump shit going on. You know, the impeachment's going to happen and all that's coming up. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, he doesn't have Twitter. Shit, but it's not, it's not yeah. like just freaking me out 24-7. Yeah, it's, it, well, there's, you know, it, it's the level of shit to where it doesn't take over my spiritual side and we have to talk about it on um, Wittershins and shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, hey, there's... There's politics going on and stuff being decided and uh, people qualified for uh, positions in cabinets are, are getting them and they're doing stuff. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of the, uh, the right-wingers are bitching. It's like, you know, why aren't you guys all going off about all of the great things that Biden's doing? And it's like, well, and everybody says the same thing. It's like, because we don't worship Biden. We hired, we hired him to do a job. He's doing a, the job. We, yeah. we we like his job, but we don't have to. It's like, well, you know, we're supposed to throw parades yeah, for yeah. him every week. Do we have to form a religion? You know, let's see what they have. Q. We could be what R. No, that would be a Republican. S. Uh, oh, we pick a, any J letter of the fucking J. J for J for Joe. Uh, we could be Joe and on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got it. Well, that's the thing. You know, we're, we're going to start yeah. that. You can you can you know uh, from you know Q. Q's got merch. Who getting paid for that merch? <laughs> oh, yeah, like T-shirts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who getting paid for that? I don't know. Unless somebody's just bootlegging it. Like, I, yeah, I think back like like my old, you know, punk rock days. It's like crass. Yeah. Everybody had a crass shirt. People had crass posters. People had crass merchandise. Crass never merched shit. And anybody that had any of those things that I spoke about were pirated. Yeah. 
Yeah. There was just somebody that made a Crass thing yeah. and sold it. Crass didn't sell oh, shit yeah, because they were... Screen print and shit. I mean, they were just that dedicated to their anarchy. They wouldn't market shit. <laughs> Even their own albums. Oh, dear. But now we got to talk about other fuckery in the world, huh? Well, fuckery in our world. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you know, the, the world of Widdershins. So yeah. it's, you know, it's ready for your spiritual side, but our spirit, spiritual side's been dominated with this other crap going on in the world. We should, <laughs> we should put something together called World of Widdershins. The World I like of Widdershins. We'll make it a game. Wow. wow. That's taken. No. We'll okay. get sued. Oh, we'll we get can sued. pronounce it differently. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know if that uh, I don't know if that's going to cover copyright law. I think it's about you know specific letters and specific uh, configurations. Okay, okay. World of Wittershins witches. We can still be wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, that that that. There, there's yeah. more. That has more enthusiasm. It See, packs a bigger punch. See, you know, not only you know do, do you you know. Excel in editing, but you know maybe you got a future in marketing too. I used to that write headlines. Great. Yeah, but you know that that translates into marketing. Yeah, maybe you got a future in marketing too. That was great. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's all about mm-hmm. you know slogans and fucking you know it's headlines technically. Yeah, they also. I mean, you see? were already marketing. See. Yeah. Yeah. Because people don't actually read the text anymore, anyways. Clearly. You just write headlines. Clearly. So people like you are like even more important than I'm ever an essential before. worker, yo. Oh, so essential, baby. <laughs> My work is essential. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so today, uh, you know, you may have you know gauged from the uh, title of the show uh, and and the sublines of you know the vats of tea spilled and the reams of wigs snatched so um, vats, that we got so stuff to, 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 to say uh, now that we're able to focus on, on our communities if we have those and if anybody wants those I particularly um, before even going there um I don't want those. I, I've I've formed pagan communities in other lands. Never really benefited me at all. Uh, never you know, benefited most of the people involved you know, at all. <laughs> it was never my jam. Yeah, so, yeah, but I, it was it was kind of just something that it was kind of my job to do in my priestly capacity and the tradition that I came from that I was supposed to do that. It was in the fucking book of shadows. You come into a land and there's no others like you. You're supposed to uh, gather people of like mind and train them and form, you know, uh, well, for them it was covens. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, communities well, and stuff. Well, you know, you're going to get your brownie points. You tried. I got my brownie points. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. All, all the people that hate me, that I brought to the gods that I brought to the goddess, all I get brownie points from the gods. You yeah. know that's that's you know uh, I I never viewed you know priesthood is a a gains kind of thing. It's more shit you owe. It's now your responsibility to deal with huge tasks that you took on and uh, symbolic of recognition of the crap you climbed through to get there. It was never about privilege, you know, rank meant something very different or still means something very different in our systems. And it means just what I said, shit, it's recognition of the shit you climbed through and the shit you're now responsible for, the shit you owe to in your initiations. That's, that's rank to me. Um, and, um, uh, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> but, the community. Um, oh yeah, you but build. but yeah. So you know, when when I was in Santa Cruz, you know, it was it was that that's what I was trained to do was, you know, form a pagan community, um, and and then I guess leave because the last time I did that did that thing in another land, that's what I was compelled to do at the time. Well, you know, like maybe that is part of the process. You know, <laughs> admittedly, in Santa Cruz, you were doing pretty well until I came along. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, but, 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 well, th- th- thank you. That's very nice. That's not true. 
Um, I was still very entrenched in my anarchist ways, even though I was a retailer. Uh, the furthest thing from my mind at the time was making money, and that's what needed to happen. Um, so I, I was not doing well. I did I did way better after meeting you. Um, really? I I fucking got I, I eradicated the cancers. Oh yeah, that well were that, that that yeah to me and uh, and and well when I met you, I was in a worker owned collective that I had formed with a bunch of anarchists that I called temporary workers, uh, temp workers for the gods. Um, I trained them enough witchcraft to work in a witch store, um, but their dedication to the craft pretty much ended there. Um, every one of them, except for the one Thelemite um, in the midst. Um, yeah. He was already a Thelemite, and you know he was um, true, true to his stuff. Um, but all of the other ones, they were just, you know... Um, a means to an end. Oh, fuck. Get out of my head, woman. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I'm going to go, mm, you had my means to an end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess that's why I'm still here. Yeah, pretty much that. And mm-hmm. uh, in the time that I met you, um, and maybe as a result of, of Hurricane Marta, um, those things were stripped um, from me. And, and and it was a weird thing because everybody was a, 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 it was a worker-owned collective. Everybody was a mutual stockholder. And then they all like had uh, internal issues between them and they'd all upon parting and they'd say look i i don't want that asshole to get my stock so i'm going to sign it over to you it's like everybody loved me <laughs> um, so uh and eventually everybody did that and i'm standing there um owning the witch store which was as you said at the time and never had occurred to me that's as it should be that's who you are me? I teared up. Are you? <laughs> you said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I Is that what you meant when uh, you said that's who you are? Because I said yeah. that? No, you said that to me. Yeah. That's as it should be. That's who you are. I said that? I was raised to own a witch store. Yeah. It was necessary to in, uh, incorporate these other soldiers to uh, get the battle accomplished. But yeah. um, once accomplished... Um, they were no longer necessary, and they went on to other things anyways. Yeah. So um, I disagree with your previous statement. I did a lot better after you. Really? Yeah. Oh. You know, we weren't, like, going out to nice restaurants every night, you know, in my previous life. We were you after were. you came along. I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With Okay. So we weren't going out to nice restaurants every night where, where I was paying for it. Before that, <laughs> they don't always pay. For it. <laughs> a lot of times, yeah, a lot yeah. of times. Yeah, I'll you do know, that. Yeah, you know, you learn certain things in business. You know, mm-hmm. about the value of cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any rate, so, so we've been through witch wars. Oh, oh God! We've been through. I've lost count already. Traditions and communities ripped yeah. apart, and. You know, maybe that's the thing. Like I said, the last time I did that before Santa Cruz, um, as soon as I, you know, made a uh, a solid community, I was compelled by the goddess to go, and I had made oaths to do that once called upon. I, I resisted them at the time. I had other shit going on. I had a career. I had a marriage. Um, I used those as excuses each time that the goddess called upon me, and um, the first two times she said, "Oh, oh, honey." Oh, you know, it's, it's tough love. It's like mom shit. It's, uh, she said, so, oh, is, is that in your way? Is this? Is that, yeah, you know, I, I got this, I got this, I got this marriage, you know, I'm fucking married, and my wife's got a career and all that. I, I can't really just up stakes and fucking go north right now. And she said, oh, oh, let me, let me take care of that for is you, that dear. How it is? Boom exploded that fucking thing. I said, well, fuck, you know, I got this career. I kind of, you know, I worked really hard to get into this fucking career in law enforcement to do some grand other anarchist ideal thing within it. I said, oh, oh, baby, baby, let me take care of that for you too. 
boom, blew that let fucking me, up. Let me lift your burden. <laughs> yes. So I learned what I passed on to my kids after that. I said, do not make her repeat herself thrice. I can't imagine the devastation she would have caused to my world had I made her repeat herself thrice after I had oathed to do the thing. So I went and did the thing, and then that was the creating the community in Santa Cruz, and then Mm -hmm. I called away to do other things. And I have not, uh, goddess bless it, I have not had that calling again. (laughs) I have not had the calling to go make a magical community, um, create one, and or join one. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe I've, I've, I've done that portion of the job, and here we are in New Orleans, yep. where we have this vast... Easiest and, move ever. Yep, vast and diverse magical community, and I'm sure they've mm-hmm. got all their little squabbles and stuff that, you know... We probably wouldn't even know about if Christian didn't tell us about it. <laughs> um, but they just, they don't affect me. Yeah. They don't affect me. When we were in Santa Cruz, we were in a, a you know, big fish in a small pond. Uh, and uh, that pond became way too small. And we jumped out of that pond into the ocean. And here in the ocean, it's like, I, I have no competitors. I don't have them. Even back then, I never considered my competitors competitors but they were competitors it was a small pond only so many witches in the town um and that's why there there was witch wars and i never started them and we never started them nope. um we had ours um people always started them yep. they always saw like thought they would do better if we weren't in their way and therein lies the rub with everybody every story <laughs> that will tell you tonight it's the same scenario. We know it well because we've experienced it ourselves and knew the wrongness of it all of those times. Um, and in this big ocean that we find ourselves in now, there are no competitors. Mm-hmm. You and your side, part, part of the ocean in the same industry, you have no competitors. Nobody can compete with what you do. Um, nobody can do what I do the way I do it. They can do what they do the way they do it, and maybe that'll work out for them. Um, But there's nobody that's in my way. There's no crumb on the floor that I want to squabble with any of you over because, motherfuckers, I'm after the cake, and right now it's king cake season. And we get in the fucking king cake. I get no king cake crumbs. And all of tomorrow. Yes, in all of these stories we'll tell you about tonight, it's just a bunch of people squabbling over crumbs with people that are not their enemies with people that are not their adversaries while their adversaries sit in fucking mansions on hills and churches with fucking steeples laughing amongst themselves i think i said it yesterday when i was talking to somebody and said you know fake lore had its value when i was a kid and we all believed that nine million witches were killed during the burning times we didn't have this many witch wars they came up but they didn't embroil you know entire communities and maybe it's technology that drives these things i don't know but we didn't have it like we have it now because we all recognized that we all had an enemy without. And other things that I have studied my whole life, um, group dynamics, um, the the ways communities work. Uh, If you go go find me on YouTube, my 13 laws of power, um, every group, once it becomes a cohesive group, needs to have somebody who, every us needs a them. It can be an enemy, it can be an adversary, it can just be another group that we have a friendly competition with. But without designating that dynamic, that dynamic takes over every time. If a cohesive group does not designate an adversary without, there will be enemies within this this dynamic will happen with the people in charge. If you're a priest or you're a priestess, it may sound fucking ugly. You may not like the color of my words, but 
they're just true. They just are. It's just human nature and maybe human nature sucks, but it is. You've got a desert. If there, if you have an us, you have to, and you're in charge of the us, you have to designate a them. If you don't do it, there will be them within us and you'll never accomplish anything in your group. It'll be torn apart from within. Now look at America. It's a macrocosm of this microcosm of which I speak. Um, if when, when America <laughs> saw that the red menace across the pond and, and sitting to my left <laughs> was the enemy, <laughs> the Republicans and the Democrats had a solidarity um, that we don't see anymore. They now see the enemy within, and now it's, you know, now it's on the Democrat side. So I was like, well, shit, we've got these QAnon people within us. The enemy is within, literally. (laughs) Domestic dictatorism, we've talked more about it in the last couple months than we have ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, Proud Boys, all that crap. Yeah, yeah. Um, Domestic terrorism. So we, we, li- we literally manifested the enemy from, from within. Back in the day, you know, groups like, like militias, you know, they were watching um, Red Dawn. Red Dawn's where the Cubans and the Russians invade the United States and the fucking, you know, the backwoods boys get some guns and, you know, fight them in guerrilla style, you know. But it was, it was solidarity. Um, unfortunately, I wish this was different. Maybe the great awakening of the the, the Aquarian age will change us all um, as beings, but this is our the gears that turn us at this time. Um, we have to have that. If we have an external enemy, we have solidarity every fucking time, um, all over the earth, every battle ever fucking fought. Um, the, the, you have to fucking have everybody enraged against one singular force or the f- shit's going to happen um, within. And that's what goes on with us. Now, um, we had, uh, well, we had uh, TJ and Amanda from Three Crows Conjure. I mm-hmm. think our just last show, right? I think so. Was it our last show? I think it was our last show. So. Um, after that... Um, in an old post where we had been discussing these issues, I had uh, uh, Misty, Misty Scalise um, tag me and say, um, I guess some people just are okay with plagiarism. Now, we never talked about this on the show because it wasn't a very big deal, but you're going to like, you know, tag me into it. All right, tag, I'm in. So... They have some sort of issues with um, having similar candles. Uh, she believes were plagiarized from her. Uh, in the posts that she sucked me into, um, I was told that that uh, you know he had threatened her. Um, she didn't feel safe. Um, these kinds of buzzwords that I often hear when somebody's trying to whip up a mob, okay? Um, you, you should feel safe. Um, you shouldn't feel threatened. But people use these things to like whip up people's emotions. And see, unbeknownst to, to, to her and to many people, um, I've studied the art of war, the 48 laws of power, the 32 laws of military strategy, on and on and on books like this. I will not make an action out of an emotion. And that's something maybe y'all should try. I'm sure we're getting a lot of people tuned into this particular broadcast that need to hear this particular message. Um, Just because you can whip up a mob using emotion doesn't make it right. Matter of fact, it's always wrong. That's why I will never take an action out of an emotion. I may take an action out of hate. Hate is not an emotion. Anger is an emotion that's related to hate. But hate goes a little bit further. It's, it's not an emotional thing. It's, it's something that's taken over your entire being. If somebody you know, makes me hate them, yeah, yeah, 
I'll throw on them. Is that the commercial people here when yeah, they tune I'm, I'm into our show? To, I'm trying to get into the chat room, but I forgot how to do it. Yeah, I always forget to how to do it. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like I see any chats in there yet. Okay. Um, you know, let's see, where was I? Um, so that kind of thing doesn't work on me. And in case anybody hasn't heard it, every time that I've gotten in a fracas with one of these these mobs, I've hollered, hollered out the same thing. It's, it's on my banner of war, logic, reason, and evidence. Come, if you're going to come at me, come correct. Come with those things or fuck yourself. I ain't, I'm never going to be a fucking QAnon person. And some of these people um, that I'm, I'm thinking about talking here tonight, uh, they're like QAnon people. <laughs> the QAnon within. They, they believe all these conspiracies are going on. And all these people are plotting against them to make them feel unsafe and stuff. Now, the thing is that the, this person with the, the, the candle problem... Um, or, or the the accusation that you know uh, three crows conjures or similar candles to hers. You know she was talking about. You know she was threatened by him and she didn't feel unsafe. And and well, she showed me all these screenshots of them are uh, talking about candles, talking about different stuff, um, but failed to actually present um, any screenshots where this person had threatened her. Now to your emotional breed. Um, that's ruled by emotion, they would have still ran with that even having not seen the evidence of the thing that evoked the emotion. Now, if somebody was being threatened, if somebody was being harassed, that would evoke an, an emotion in me. But I wait until I actually am presented with the evidence um, uh, before allowing the emotion to take over. Now, see, I'm, uh, I'm a cancer and was once ruled by my emotions. Um, but I was taught that we're born here to um, overcome the weaknesses and accumulate the strengths of each zodiological sign and hopefully do more than one sign in a lifetime. Uh, and and if, you, if you operate just like your sun sign, I think you haven't done a whole lot of spiritual growth. Um, I am not I like a cancer. And then you help me with that. So I am not like a cancer. I'm not driven by my emotions. And Marta's helped me to develop a very thick skin <laughs> and take a large amount of verbal abuse, um, <laughs> which I was not that good at. I, there's plenty of people that just, you know, said enough shit to get me to punch them in the nose in, in my life. And, and, and I'm better uh, as a person for that. You Thank you, wanna, baby. You don't want to bring up <laughs> verbal abuse here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Um, but uh, I've, you know, there's been other people that I've gotten in like arguments with and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, it's like, well, if you're, you're lucky I got a thick skin right now. <laughs> it's like that, my, my previous, you know, my young cancer self, oh, no, no, no. I'd have gotten all pissed off and done a bunch of stupid shit over that. Um, but these are the tools that uh, mobs use. These are the tools that QAnon uses, and um, we should be better than that and not tolerate um, these kinds of things. Um, if you're going to allege that somebody threatened you, um, you should provide that evidence, not evidence of discussing candles. Um, and I, I dug through all of it, and, well, now, right away, I've got, uh, uh, I, I've got a, a, a witness... And, and I guess a defendant um, who I know, I know the defendant. And I'm probably not a good judge for this because um, we know the Three Crows Conjure people. I don't know how I know this other person. They're all my fucking friends list on yeah, Facebook. That's pretty that much all, all this person is. Um, we've, we, we've met them in person. We've, we, we've touched, you know, hands. Um, I'm going to have to, you know... Um, give them some credibility right away. But then this other person is like, okay, so you have a business interest that you believe is uh, in conflict based on these people's business interests. Well, already, you're not a reliable witness. I'd have to throw you out of my court. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, have, you have skin in the game. Um, uh, so... Um, but then, you know, further down the line, uh, she was uh, she she accused um, uh, Three Crows Conjure of uh, stealing her uh, 
bleeding skull candle uh, idea. And I said, honey, <laughs> unless you came up with the bleeding skull candle in 2000, uh, when I first had a shop, my own shop, and started making candles, um, you didn't invent the fucking bleeding skull candle. I fucking did. You take a fucking, you take red wax, make a fucking skull candle, then you take the skull candle, you know, you keep the wick long, and you dip it, and you know, let it cool, and dip it several times in the fucking black wax, and you got a bleeding fucking skull candle. Looks like a black candle, you light it on fire, it fucking bleeds. Now, that wasn't an original idea when I came up with it either. That's a reversing candle. A black candle with red inside was the reversing candle in hoodoo, in witchcraft, in uh, Latino traditions way back. You fucking, if you went over to fucking Indio products, even they, even though they suck and you get a fucking reversing candle, it's a red candle with black on the outside. It's not an original idea. And there's the fucking problem. There's no original ideas. This is fucking magic. This is ancient. Um, I, okay. I came up with some elaborations that could be considered new ideas, but they were just elaborating on old ideas. Um, all of this shit's old. Um, that's kind of the point. And then the, I, I was, I, when saying that, then I got pictures of these coffin candles. Like, oh, bitch, mom's got coffin candles in her books. It's been fucking hoodoo. It's been conjure. It's been witchcraft since the 60s. Fucking coffin candles. What are you going to come at next? Cross candles? Did you invent those two? Fucking penis candles? Did you invent those two? Fucking, she had these rainbow yoni candles. I think she invented those two. Those, you know, may have been later, you know. They weren't, you know, on the shelves when I was a kid. But they, I've that's, seen yoni candles. Yeah, I've seen them. Fucking, and we had a mold for them, too. Um, there's nothing new. There's, a, you know, there's no plagiarism. There's no fucking plagiarism. You copy somebody's lines out of a book, um... Maybe it's plagiarism, but most times it's still not. You know, it wasn't one of my, it isn't one of my favorite people, but I remember um, some of Cat Ironwood's uh, works were uh, called on for plagiarism, her her, uh, herb magic books. Um, They said that she plagiarized Cunningham. Well, what she had done was she had derived her work from the same sources that Cunningham had. Uh, meaning Cunningham had borrowed those from those sources too. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing new, kids. Can, we f- quit, can you quit fighting over fucking breadcrumbs? Like, um, Misty's enemy is not TJ and Amanda, and, and TJ and Amanda seem to know that she's not their enemy too. Um, but she had, had to tag me in that thing after having them on the show and say uh, some people are okay with plagiarism. Well, I get your little offhanded fucking insult, but it ain't going to fly. Not in my it's, fucking it's house. It's called passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. That's the word I was looking for, actually. Um, no, it ain't going to fly. It's not fucking plagiarism. You have some really beautiful candles, um, but ain't nothing there that I see that anybody invented. And TJ and Amanda has got some great candles and other stuff um i don't think that they invented them either and i don't think that they're telling everybody that they invented them they're doing like you know classical conjure stuff you know three crows conjure says it right in the name it's like how are you gonna do conjure and just have a bunch of new shit it's like they got they got a bunch of old shit they got you know stuff that they did too everybody got some really nice stuff okay you know what both y'all i don't know if y'all are listening but you'll probably get a word uh misty TJ, Amanda, most of your candles look way nicer than mine. I was never trying to make anything pretty. <laughs> I marketed all my things to craft practitioners, and that's a bad idea. <laughs> you won't make enough money to keep your store open. <laughs> you guys, both of y'all, or all three of y'all, you got, you got some beautiful looking stuff. I perused all of your websites. I looked at all of your stuff. You got some some beautiful stuff. Much nicer than mine. My my candles very, my candles very crude. But no, I no, no, no. 
don't, don't, don't. Uh, you know, okay, I had some stuff, you know, the Santa warranty candle and yeah. stuff like that, but that was just a nice mold. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I remember every one of them. Every candle I made um, was one of my special children. You even made Buddha candles. I even made Buddha candles, <laughs> and I saw, yes, yeah, somebody has. God, who was that? I just saw that they had that same Buddha candle. It might have been TJ and Amanda, actually. Mm. Looked like the same old. I might have been. I'm not sure. Mm. Because we were just looking at somebody's store, and I can't think of who else's store I was just looking at. Um, but um, uh, I remember all of my candles, and I've seen many of them out on the internet. You know, uh, even though I don't like people showing their spell work, mm. I've seen people doing spell work with my candles all over the internet, and it's, it makes me proud. All my little children out there. They're but, just fucked up enough to be recognizable. Exactly. Well, they're just fucked up enough to be my kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no um, offense, no offense up Sasha. Enough to be your wife. <laughs> All right, so that yes, you know. <laughs> yeah, you just insulted your boy. Yeah, that's you know, by and large, you know, the the first little. I don't even I I don't even know if I would call that a witch war, but you know it's, tensions are high and and at the time there was yeah no it is it is I am I'm uh, recalling things now when I was first you know sucked onto that thread or I, I think it popped up my thing and I realized you know hey they're talking about somebody I know okay I'm gonna have to jump in here because. <sighs> that's just the kind of guy I am. I am. I always jump in boots first and get myself in a whole bunch of trouble. Um, they, were, they were whipping up this whole fucking uh, mob, mob based on I felt threatened. I was threatened. I didn't feel safe. Um, threatened. These are the buzzwords of the mob uh, whipper uppers, um, and it takes away from actual victims. And actual people that are being threatened, um, and it's just it's it's a disgrace to do that. To to you know you have a problem with somebody, you've got to you got to go there and whip up that kind of stuff to to get your problems dealt with. Um, like how the QAnon people use the "Save the Children" tagline, yes. which takes away from the people who are actually working to save the children and aren't yeah. just sit, sitting there around saying it's Lady Gaga and Tom Hanks. Yeah, there's uh, there's real victims out there. And uh, in this particular story, um, there's no victim. <clears throat> there's no victims in this thing. Um, the victims are probably the people that have, have had to watch the bullshit go on uh, maybe the effects on individual businesses that um, brought that about. You know, maybe there's there's victims after the fact, um, but uh, there were no victims there. And we'll be back with more um, tales of fuckery on Wittershins Radio.
Blood Ceremony. Which would our Witter Shins Radio? So, Witter Shins Radio typically comes to you Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Central, Central Time. Um, every Wednesday, unless we say so. But, you know, if you want to know when we say so, you got to you know, look at our Facebook page. Uh, Wittershins Radio, you should find it on Facebook. It's pretty easy. It's, you know, look at our logo. It's that logo. And, uh, you know, that's where we make announcements if we're going to change stuff, if we're going to add stuff. Because as I've said to you many a time here on Wittershins Radio, we've been teasing you people. We have been giving Just you the tip. the tip of our package. Okay? Our package has allowed us to go on the air Three hours per day, unlimited times per day, which means we could go on the air for three hours, restart, go on for three hours, restart, go on for three hours, and, and forever. We, we, we've tried this. We did it one time. We did like, you know, at least nine hours. Yeah. It was a long fucking show, but we had, had the material. We did it because we've got the large package. Yeah. Now, we probably need to use more of our package mm-hmm. and not we've, waste we've it. We've been holding back on we've you. We've been holding back um, because it's going to come a time pretty soon that I'm going to have to pay for an even larger package just to, to uh, house our archives. Yeah. Our archives are just fucking years long now yeah. and I'm getting to the, the tail end of our storage space even in a package as large as ours. Mm-hmm. So... For reasons that will become immediately uh, apparent, um, you know, within the next, you know, couple stories or so, Wittershins Radio is going to be coming to you more times this month than Wednesday. I can't tell you all the times, but there's, there's some Thursdays happening. There's talk about a Sunday. There's talk about live guests. Mm-hmm. Um, we shall it, eat king cake. We shall eat king cake. And we shall be on the air several days a week. In addition to all of the other media, social media whoring that we already do, like the Stay the Fuck at Home show six days a week. And my fucking, uh, my Ask Uncle Bert show, which appears all over Facebook and on TikTok and all over. You know, in addition to that, we're going to have to be finding this time um, for more Wittershins. So you, if you're not following, you need to follow. If you're not on the, on our Facebook page, uh, following Wittershins Radio, there you need to follow there too, because um, there's a lot coming at you in uh, this particular month. Because WitchCon is coming on, and we want to get as many of the presenters from WitchCon on Wittershins as we can. And there's only like three Wednesdays in the month, so it's requiring us to use more of our package. Yes. Longer and deeper. Mm-hmm. Wittershins. Deeper. Yes. yes. We do little Wittershin circles with our package. So, follow. <laughs> Let's see. So, um, so, there was that one. The next one. Then there's the ATR Wars. Mm-hmm. This happened. I haven't talked about this on the air. Um, and I think I only talked about it one other place. But um, there was this big hubbub on some, um, some Polaro's page. And um, it was attacking a friend of mine, uh, uh, Candelo Cambisa. Who I've known for a very long time. And this other person, I don't know them. Um, I know them through Facebook. I've broken bread. I've had a drink with Candelo Cambisa. So um, I was, at the very least, I was going to require a logic, reason, and evidence, but also a large portion of the latter um, uh, to turn on a friend, to turn on somebody that I actually know, uh, for somebody I don't know, um, who I've had plenty of, you know, headbutts with over the time. And, and, and this person, um, ever since he got scratched into Apollo, um, 
I've seen him spend most of his time attacking other Poleros and questioning their legitimacy than anything spiritual, um, anything good. And so rather than address the attacks on my friends, I just said, you know, you ever notice how some Munansos, you only hear from them when they're attacking another Munanso? Yeah, I thought that this guy had his own Munanso, so apparently I had offended his other Munanso, who's, you know, his parent Munanso, who's, or friends of mine. Uh, I didn't mean it that way, so I I misspoke, apparently. Um, But... uh, that was never never really looked at. Um, everybody just uh, looked at it as I was defending this friend of mine. And I was like, um, so I got sucked into this thing. I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not defending. I'm not attacking. I won't do either one of those for a mob. I want logic, reason, and evidence. And people yelled at me, and they called me names, and one of them called me a colonizer. And uh, that's, that's not going to work. Um, I, I asked for logic, reason, and evidence. These things keep me out of these mobs and uh, definitely keep me from turning on a person that I've known a long time. It's a friend. Um, had the things been true, I still don't know if I would have turned on my friend. Um, I would have, if I believed these things, would have, you know, talked to my friend, you know, maybe, you know, try and talk him into getting some counseling or some, 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 uh, work for whatever these problems were. But see, this is part of the problem with our, the cancel culture we've allowed to, um, root within us um people don't get better in prison people don't get better in exile you know you throw a person in a hole and tell them they're a piece of shit you know eventually they're going to become a piece of shit they're going to embody what they think a piece of shit is and be worse a piece of shit than when you put them in the fucking hole um we have to have some ways of um reconciliation uh, justice, healing, um, and um, uh, what's what's the, what's the rehabilitation? Um, like I, 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 we we have another friend that we'll talk about. You know, in a little while. You know, he's always attacked for something he did a very long time ago, and basically all he did was you know say something really bad on the internet, and then. Uh, not only apologize it, but make physical amends for it to the best that anybody could do. And it's it's still something people bring up. It's like, you can't brand somebody a piece of shit and not allow them the capacity to get out of that or undo it or make amends, uh, or you're just going to have more pieces of shit. You know, there's the problem with with our our prison culture. It's, It's not about rehabilitation. They become worse. And then they get out. Um, we've we've got to be better. You know, if, if if people want to like you know mob up and act like they're playing police, um, um, we need to look at our, our methods of policing. Um, you can't just uh, cancel people out and not give them a chance to um, to defend themselves or to, to make whatever's better that they can make better. So. Um, this, this this friend of mine, he's, he's getting accused of, you know, God, you know rape and um, uh, uh, assault and all these things. And, and, and I'm saying, okay, well, God, yeah, that, that, that's horrible. Um, you know, what you got? What's, what, what's your evidence? What can you show me? Um, what I was shown in, in text messages and then in uh, a couple live videos that one of these people did, um, later were, um, you know, women, women making charges against this guy that he, you know, he attacked me, he did this, he did that. Um, but the people that they were talking to ha- had admitted in, in, in the, the video and, and the other text having a personal beef already in place with this person that they're now accusing of this this thing. It's like, I hate to tout the, the legal system 
too much because it is flawed. But the reason why we have it is to keep us from being mobs and lynching people and shit like that. Um, and it, 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 it has some wisdom to it. Um, if all you have is witness testimony and your witness is shown to be um, di- uh, un- uncredible or you know, biased, uncredible, uh, discredit, discredit your witness, um, then that piece of evidence is no longer valid. It's no longer useful. Um, I would at least want to adhere to those standards. And when somebody has, you know, such questionable motivations, you know, or, or, the, or I think one, one was like, you know, like an ex-girlfriend or something. It was like, I am, unlike Marta, I've never had a nice breakup. I never had uh, anybody that I'm friends with anymore. It always turned out ugly. <laughs> always turned out ugly. Um, I, I remember like, you know, um, my, uh, my, my first wife had arranged um, with, with a bunch of friends of mine um, for me to fuck her best friend so she could fuck my best friend. And it was orchestrated that they, we would have a game of quarters. And once I was drunk enough, they would like pose this question. It was, uh, once I was drunk enough, they moved into a game of truth or dare. I asked if I was attracted to, you know, um, this friend of ours. Um, that's how it happened. And it just so happened that I really hit it off with this friend of hers. And uh, we were both cancers and we fell in love. Um, what my wife told our mutual community, our coven, uh, we were both um, um, priests and priests of the same coven, um, was that I ran off with her best friend. Now, somebody that was not my wife, <laughs> um, that I, I ha- had a child with and was in a relationship with because I was taking care of my child, uh, said similar things when I hooked up with Marta. Tried to like play it off. Like, yeah, I ran off with Marta. I didn't run off. I took care of my kid. Like you can say whatever I want. You know, you can say I abandoned you, but she actually told my kid that I abandoned her. And I didn't. It's like, you know, I see every fucking, you know, three days a week. You're at my house. How's that abandoning you? Um, people. And, and, and we have her more if the mom allowed it. It's yeah. not like that, you know, you set those terms. Those yeah. were her terms. Yeah. That was the most she'd give you. People say shit for their own egos or to hurt those that they feel hurt each other. Um, I. I agree with the Me Too movement. I do not agree with believing every person that says they're a victim. Logic, reason, and evidence. If you said you were a victim and took it to court, you'd have to provide those things. Um, A person's statement whose whose motivations are questionable would not fly in a court, and it's not going to fly in the court of me turning on somebody that I've known for years. Um, And if those things were true and I believe those things were true, I'd be, um, I'd be on that friend trying to get them counseling, trying to get them something, you know, some way to fix their fucking life. I wouldn't like just like cast them into fucking outer darkness to embrace their dark side and become more evil. Like you fucking people don't understand humans. <laughs> um, but uh, at any rate, I, I, I would require those things, and I saw none of those things. It's like, you know, I could just think, you know, what, what some f- pissed-off ex-girlfriend uh, that I had, because you know, I, I spent 20 years polyamorous, and a lot of women just didn't accept what I told them day one. It's like, I'm polyamorous. I'm not committed to you. You're not my girlfriend. You're not my partner. Um, we're fucking... I was always pretty clear, um, but many people will, uh, women or men, will say whatever they want if they want to fuck you. And will tell you whatever you want to fucking hear if they want to fuck you. And then after they fuck you, um, all that shit goes out the window and then they, you know, assume some sort of other relationship that you're having with them. Um, So there was a lot of pissed off bitches. (laughs) 
I, I could just imagine getting one of them on the stand to talk shit about me. <laughs> my, my, he's, he's emotionally unavailable, okay? So, <laughs> that's crime, what? Uh, at any rate, um, that was the thing. It's like one of these people was, was an ex-girlfriend and uh, one of these people was an, uh, an ex, um, you know, in, in the same tradition as them. And I just, I didn't hear anything that would compel me to... Um, take the action to join a mom. Um, in that, I was attacked by all kinds of people that had been friends of mine in the, the ATR community. And I'm gonna, and as we do this thing, I'm going to call each one out that, that we've had on the show. Because I had Amberzine Laguerre attack me on that show, or on that, on that thread. And it was all up in my grill, and I was merely asking... And I, uh, only Ifa Abeyu tried to provide me uh, evidence. I just didn't find the evidence compelling enough to take the steps that they wanted me to take. But nobody would, would provide me evidence. Every time I, I asked for evidence, they said I was, uh, I was defending Candelo. It's like, no, I'm just, I'm not taking a side. I'm trying to ask, what the fuck are you people fucking talking about? And asking what the fuck are you people fucking talking about makes the mob fucking attack you. I'll never join a group like that. You people want to be in a cult? Go fucking join QAnon. That's what fucking QAnon is. I ain't going down like that, man. I fucking got my own brain. I can make my own decisions. Um, nobody would do that. And then what if I obey you tried, um, still, you know, unfriended me, um, but she tried. Uh, Amberzine Laguerre just totally outright attacked me. Now, we've had Amberzine Laguerre on the show a long time ago. We promoted her stuff. We tried to do that for all of our, our friends that had different businesses to support them. Um, Amberzine Laguerre, we knew. We met in the flesh. We touched hands. Um, we, we, we solemn elected each other. Um, kind of went way back. Mm-hmm. But what the fuck did she ever do for me? What the fuck did she ever do for you? We propped up the Conjure Galas when that community started the thing, when the break off from, uh, from Lucky Mojo. We covered the stories that led to those, and guess what? The stories that made those things happen were Candelo stories. The stories that made the Conjure Galas appear were Candelo stories. Those people, every one of them that I know, I met because of Candelo. You, go, you want me to turn on Candelo because of that when I ask for better evidence and when I ask for any evidence, you're going to yell at me? You think that's going to motivate me? You're going to call me names? You're going to call me, a, uh, you know, call me a <clears throat> white? And one person called me a, a colonizer. And it's like, do you think fucking being a bigot's going to fucking motivate me? No. You clearly, we didn't spend enough time together when we met because you don't fucking know me, people. And you fucking don't want no Marta either. <laughs> That's what I liked about her right away, man. This bitch can't be pushed around. Um, uh, there, there were rules against uh, uh, teachers having relationships with students. But I always like to look at the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. And it's like, well, the reason why we have that is so that the teachers don't use personal power dynamics to rule a person against their will into sexual activities. Um, and there, it's like... There was never... A, a second where I felt coerced or intimidated or pressured. If anything, yeah. I thought I was going to ruin you. <laughs> and so, you know, at the time I'm going, well, Marta could never be ruled against her will. Using any sort of, you know, of holding my rank above her shit. No, no. And that's what I like about her. I don't like bitches like that. So um, long ago, I recognized the problem and made sure to program myself never to be that problem and i don't maybe it was natural i i'm i think it was it was part natural part programming but i'm just not attracted to you know damsels in distress and waifs and shit and that's what we got going on here we got people play damsel in distress 
People play, you know, victim. Everybody runs to their aid. Nobody ever questions because now some movement, some hashtag told us, believe every victim. I'm sorry, people. I, in my spare time, which is a lot, I watch Maury Povich and Steve um, Wilkos. And uh, Jerry, but that doesn't happen as much on Jerry, but uh, countless times has there been a a woman scorned that accused a dude of rape or accused a dude of uh, molesting their children that we later find out uh, not only were they lying about that, but they coached their children to say that. Um, It's a dark fucking world out there, and I see it right there on my fucking TV, and I've seen that happen too many times. I've seen shit like that go down in uh, my activist life where women accused other activists of um, unwanted sexual advances and it it turned out later upon examination their real motivation was to keep them out of political activity um, because they had been an effective activist. Um, One of those people actually turned out to be um, an FBI agent. Um, We've later found out through the Freedom of Information Act. You know, I'm coming from this kind of thing, so I just uh, I'm not gonna believe everything I hear. Um, I I will always um, advocate for an actual victim. I will always defend an actual victim. And the thing that I have a problem with is the people that do this kind of shit and use this motivation that all of us have to protect the victim, to motivate a mob, to cover their bullshit, to attack somebody that they're pissed off about about something else, I'm out. I'm, like Lindsey Graham said, man, I'm out. Ain't going down like that. Ain't going to fucking play that. That's another thing that needs to come up when we're talking about legal things. What's the motivation? What's your motivation? What was the motivation of the suspect? What's the motivation of the witness or the accuser? Um, And if if the motivation is that you're scorned because they bailed on you or something like that, um, well, then you really suck because there's actual victims out there that should be heard. There's actual resources out there that should go to actual victims and not people playing a fucking game. And those people that do play that fucking game, I would hope that that all of the women have a, 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 a yearly meeting. Um, uh, maybe you could, you could all Zoom it because there's so many women and, and, and just like... Binders full of women. Yeah, and just, you know, <laughs> for you, you can declare certain women traitors to your gender for doing shit like that and taking actual victim claims from away from actual victims while they're fucking using the system to scapegoat somebody else and just like kick them out of the fucking gender. It's like, you are no longer a woman. You could, they could have trades, you know, like to do with the race trades. I don't know. We could do like, could you do like male, female and the different transgenders or, or is there binary? What's binary? Binary is male and female. Male and female, they go binary. They go like trade. I'm just like, no, we don't. We females no longer accept this piece of shit. We're going to offer them to the binaries. <laughs> <laughs> but then the binaries probably wouldn't want them either. All right, I, I need to clearly think over this strategy more. Um, but there's that. And um, I know I know mutual friends that have turned on this mutual friend um, countless. Um, but... A thing that I saw uh, during this whole thing is that the people attacking um, Candelo all have the same kind of business. And the hashtag they made was shut it down, referring to his business, trying to shut down all of his business activities um, shut down his his website. Um, the aim that they took was to come at his business when they are competitors in the same business. Now, that's how they would view themselves. Maybe Candela would view it like that. It's like we over here, we live in a world where I don't I don't have any competitors. Marta doesn't have any competitors. Um, maybe y'all should get out of them little ponds jump out here in the ocean with us or something, maybe stop playing them fucking silly games. 
I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Weird shins.
stellar corpses. One of the few uh, acts of its caliber that we have uh, actual uh, permission to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had Bad Religion again because uh, American Jesus, because they have so many songs that speak to our troubled times. Mm-hmm. Um, and before I go on to the next one, there, there's some other stuff. Then there was uh, Amoria. Mm. Amoria, I forget the last name. And there's a reason that I forget the last name. It's like, you know, she turned on me on that post too. And uh, she talked about, uh, um, asked if I swallow, uh, saying I was sucking Candelo's dick, I believe, something like that. Um, You know, I took it to that level right away. And it's like, you know, and and, and there's a reason why I don't know her last name because it's like, uh, who the fuck were you? You were some... I was Candelo's co-host for like probably a couple years and then he brings on this other co-host and I spent the rest of the time um, working with her wondering, why the fuck are you on the show? You're like, you have nothing to say. You're, you're like, you're like uh, his, uh, the Robin to, to his Howard Stern, mm-hmm. just laughing in the background, really much offering nothing. Uh, like nothing. the chick on uh, Ridiculous. Beach. Like the chick, <laughs> like uh, Chanel West Coast. Yeah. Um, like a black Chanel West Coast. Um, you were a, a prop, and um, uh, apparently uh, she but said. Well, well, apparently she tells tells people that she she left the show. You didn't leave the fucking show you were on the sh- the last fucking episode when candelo canceled the show i was drunk off my ass but i remember it I happening remember and it. i've heard the fucking um yeah yeah that's 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 that was this i think that was the sh- that was probably the show where i said that uh all magical traditions yeah all Remedics. magical traditions yeah. follow the same laws the and they were show. and they got all that, worked that up might have hit the nail yeah the they were all worked up and all pissed off coffee. about that i think they were thinking i was talking about the wiccan reed and the threefold law which yeah. well, clearly remember, clearly they don't I, know me very well I remember there was a long pause <laughs> and Kendall yeah. goes Hermetics. <laughs> yes, yes. Totally Hermetics. And you know, I've had this argument with people of uh, of uh, uh, of color before, and uh, uh, when I remind them that Hermetics uh, comes about in Egypt, uh, and that would make uh, it a black, uh, an African thing, um, they suddenly change their tone. Somehow, there's this impression that Hermes was a Greek experience. And that's not actually true. <laughs> and and it, but but that that says something. It's like, oh, that made it okay. So wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, let me get this straight. The the color of Hermes' skin made it okay for you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Suddenly, people aren't arguing with me. But um, yeah. Um, all magical traditions can can be um, traced back to the laws that Hermes n- didn't make up. He just calculated. He wrote them down. Um, the 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 African traditions <laughs> that utilize the law of sympathetic magic are off the fucking chart. Now this this comes from 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 Hermes, right? Um, like attracts like if you're doing a thing to the likeness of the thing you want to occur or the person that you want it to occur to that's hermetics so that's that's puppets that's voodoo dolls that's uh that's mojos that's uh fucking everything that's just one of the laws of hermetics okay (laughs) <laughs> um, but all of it uh, we're all using that same fucking thing um, but yeah all magical traditions follow the same laws what Hermes did was he calculated and observed the laws of nature and put them into a set of laws he didn't create them all magic uses the laws of nature <sighs> but people want like cookie cutter answers they want stuff that'll fit on a bumper sticker the truth is 
often more, the truth is simple, but requires some explanation. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. So, now there's to the next thing. Wait, was there anybody else in there that I needed to rip the weed off, drop shade? Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. So so yeah. on, on to, to, to this now. Witch Cohen. Um, Christian Day, a friend of ours, um, created this thing called Witch Cohen. There was somebody that had done a thing called Witch Cohen before. They hadn't done anything with it in years. And so he went to that person um, and said, hey, you know, would you mind if I used it? They said no. Uh but apparently that there was some of the, the, the Bay Area uh, mob uh, that were talking about maybe doing something with it um, several months ago, and they hadn't done it. Now, I happen to know when this thing came about, my friend uh, Christian pulled this idea out of his ass. I would hope I was one of the first people... Um, asked um but um, i was asked like right away to do it and then within like hours he came out with this list of presenters that had already been signed on to this thing he just conjured out of his asshole um to to do this thing and all huge names and it's just gotten bigger and bigger and you've heard it on this show we can't even read you all of the names i do i i would i would pass out um there's just too many um it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so these uh bay area crusader types um they weren't going to do anything with it they had some pipe dream. They always do. They always fucking do. I don't know if it's the, you know, legal pot or what it fucking is. Um, there's all these fucking hippie pipe dreams. Let's hold this festival. Let's do some stuff. I'll we'll get together and have a workshop and do some rituals and stuff. And <laughs> they never fucking do it. They never fucking do it. They never pull off a goddamn thing. Pantheacon was the only fucking thing of any seriousness that they got pulled off. And the only other fucking thing was Ancient Ways. And it was from the same people. It was the, the fucking Ancient Ways put on both of those festivals. Those were only the only significant festivals well, like, in the Bay oh, Area. Oh, yeah, in the Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the only significant festivals in the Bay Area. And when those, those collapsed, uh, these people always have these pipe dreams of organizing something else. And they don't know how to organize. Um, too bad you don't have us there anymore because I was born to fucking organize. And I did that shit all the time. And so did all my people. But fuck you all. Um, I'm so glad we're not in the fucking Bay Area. Area. I'm so glad we didn't have to go to our last P- Pantheacon and have to deal with these people because we have a business in the fucking Bay Area. Um, you all are a fucking joke, and I'll fucking probably name several of you one by one. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> they weren't going to do anything with this festival, and Christian just came in and made it fucking happen. They're having him along. Oh, maybe we can have a festival called Witch Con. Well, we'll think about that. Well, well let's you have totally a meeting. Like we'll Christian we'll, we'll have a meeting, and maybe we can reach consensus on that. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll have a we'll form, form, you know, um, subgroups and committees and stuff. You fucking didn't get shit done. And Christians just got shit done. And the shit he got done was is fucking epic. It has the most epic fucking lineup um, of, of any fucking witch conference you've ever fucking seen. And it has the hugest big name pagans, me of course too, and, and doesn't have them. That's the fucking issue. It's colored on, over all kinds of stuff. They're going to say there's like, there's a turf there. Uh, Christian's a, a, a rapist. He's a child molester. He once said something really bad about if somebody got raped and he apologized very publicly for that, um, uh, gave $10,000 to a rape crisis center. Um, I've had my share of bullshit apologies, and those are not the kind. He made a full public apology, addressed everything that he had said, um, 
and then did something physical in the world to address that. Um, that's the best anybody can fucking do. Um, but the only thing that Christian Day ever did is he's rude. He's rude. That's pisses Brian people said. off. I know. I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm quote. Okay, yeah. I'm quoting Brian Kane, who knows him better than I do. He's rude, but he's usually not rude right away. Um, and I've said this a million times, and these people, um, somebody called me a Christian Day enabler in this yeah. thread. Um, uh, I've never seen him draw first blood. I've seen him be attacked many a time, and I've seen him do away with that attack with a veracity and intensity and uh, finesse that I respect and uh, would like to cultivate in my own life. Um, that's how you deal with somebody that attacks you. You know, <laughs> you know, you don't, you do, and th- this happens to us all the time. Me and Marta deal with this all the time. You don't get to play victim after you attack. Yep. You don't get to play victim over my counterattack. If my counterattack was over the top, well, I get to decide that. There's no equal and mutual. We're not boxing here, man. If you've attacked me and mine, it's fucking war. And I'll respond in accordance with my own morals with regard to that. <laughs> and, and this absolutely goes to all of these people that I'm about to talk about. Um, because we've had some of these people on our show. Now, I've, I, what I understand, and I haven't seen um, uh, physically, but... Um, there's uh, uh, Matt Aron, who we had on the show. Matt Aron, well, it was a great show. Um, he uh, um, came out, he, he said he wasn't going to do any psychic readings. And then at, at one point, um, he came up with this, uh, 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 you'll have to like, listen to the rebroadcast, but he, he came up with this thing about, you know, about my Chimaruta and an association with Willie Nelson, which, you know, we thought was incredible and I thought was incredible. But in the back of my mind, I knew that the story of my connection, uh, uh, the Willie Nelson connection to my pinnacle um, had been broadcast on my YouTube channel. I knew that. I knew that. And I went along with it. And I, you know, didn't let that play in because it was a pretty incredible thing that he did because, you know, it sounded like he was psychic on the air and stuff. But the thing that he was psychic about was publicly available. Uh, and if you just searched me, you'd find my YouTube channel and find that. And with respect to doing, you know, your homework before you go on somebody else's show, um, I'm going to say I don't necessarily think that that was um, an actual uh, psychic event that happened back on that show back that day um, because it was publicly available. Um, that's uh, There's another word for that. Uh, when psychics look you up and find out your stuff. Um, trolling? No, I maybe mean, psychic trolling. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you know, I, I heard that uh, he was involved in this. Haven't heard anything from him. Uh, it was Devin Hunter. We've had him on the show, I believe, too. Um, I so, yeah. haven't, you know, heard anything directly from him. But but this is kind of the thing is um, this happened, uh, I believe, with the last Hex Fest. A lot of these um, social justice warriors were. Um, Attacking um, Hexfest because uh, Christian was a turf and a rapist, and there was a turf in the lineup, and they were uh, bullying the other um, participants. Oh my goodness, I got to finish this story really quick. Yeah. I got like twenty minutes. <laughs> they were bull- bullying the other other participants, and uh, uh, I I heard about that, but you know, nobody came to me, nobody bullied me. Now, a lot of the people that I know were bullied uh, were women. Um, 
Uh, a lot of the people were rather, uh, you might say, more white light than I am known to be. And uh, basically that says to me, these are fucking bullies. And they're looking for somebody that they can bully. And they're going to bully him is like with all this righteous cause and all this crap. It's like, you know, if you're bullying people, if you're being a mob, if you're trying to force somebody into believing what you believe, you're a fascist. That's the very definition of fascist. And I'm not going to be a fascist. I'm not going to join a mob. I'm not going to join any of them. Uh, I thought we had Storm on one time, but then there's... I don't remember. Uh, Storm's apparently involved in this stuff. Uh, and then there's this, this woman, and I don't even know the woman you read all that stuff off the fucking Facebook page. Like, that's part of the thing. There's this woman that's already blocked me from her Facebook, talking all this shit about me and all this stuff. And it's like, well, I don't know who you are. You know who I am. Therein lies the rub. It's a bunch of nobodies trying to become somebodies by attacking somebodies, which I guess is cool because that makes me a somebody. I guess. We're somebodies. You're, you're my somebody. Yeah, baby. You have your special yeah, purpose. babies. But it's these nobodies attacking. And in this woman's fucking post, she said that um, me, <laughs> me and Christian Day um, were paying somebody to find out where she lived and where her boyfriend lived. Something like that. Something like that. Like, like, like. I'm so well off or something, and it's so expensive that me and Christian Day had to go in halvesies on that. No, I think he could, he could do that himself, honey. Um, I don't think he did that. Um, uh, I definitely didn't do that. The woman's an absolute fucking liar, and if you're going to lie to whip up your mob, then fucking your lob, mob's based on a lie, and I fucking win even if I fucking die. Um, but... Um, uh, where is I going with that? Uh, first of all, all anybody needs is your name and Google and the ability to scroll through Google and sift through Google. You can find out where anybody lives. Okay? Christian didn't have to pay anybody. I didn't have to pay anybody. I certainly wasn't paying anybody because I don't know who the bitch was. I don't know, or a Shauna or a fucking some fuck. I, I Shauna or a fuck fuck. Um, I don't even fucking know who you are. And apparently you know who I am so much you blocked me so you can talk shit about me. But I already saw about it, saw it anyways. So um, fuck y'all. So um, basics are um, anybody that I hear getting harassed by any of these motherfuckers, well then you're going to have to deal with a motherfucker that teaches magical warfare. And I teach magical warfare um, because I could teach all of the things that I see everybody teaching at all of these festivals. I could teach any one of those fucking things. Um, but that would be basic, right? I'm not saying anybody else is basic, but it's like, I want to teach something different than everybody else is teaching. And nobody else is going to teach magical warfare. It's just one of the things that, that I teach, and it, it, it gets a lot of attention. And when the, when the Catholics attack uh, Hexfest, they're going to use my workshops in their propaganda, and that just adds to my power. <laughs> so, so I just, you know, happen to be... Uh, teaching magical warfare, and nobody fucks with me. And you fuck with the people that are teaching things that seem like they're more sedate or can't deal with it or can't you know, stand up to you. Um, I will jump in. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to fuck with anybody. Um, go have your own little miserable fucking pointless ass festivals mm -hmm. and quit trying to attack people that are more successful than you. Um, we see through your shit because it's common shit. We can see it on TV all fucking day. It ain't a fucking social justice war. You ain't uh, uh, representing a noble cause. Y'all are a bunch of fucking bullies. And you've propped up this noble cause or these noble causes to make you feel good about your bullying. Um, but the result is the same. None of you are shit. And uh, if you want some shit, um, come at me with your shit. 
You know, we pick it on other fucking people. Yeah. It's like, you want to talk shit to other people? Come fucking inbox my ass, man, you fucking cowards. Every one of you are fucking cowards. Some of you are had had been mutual friends, and some of you aren't now because you unfriended me through all this thing. And none of you had the balls and or gonads to fucking approach me. When I was a kid, we were taught, if you have an issue with another witch, seek them out and attempt to resolve your differences. If you have done that, and that has failed, then you are justified at doing all of the other things that you have to do. None of you have done that, not to me. And the people that I've talked to where you have reached out, you're just like bullying and threatening them. Now I ask you... Yeah, so so I ask you all, um, you Bay Area collective getting people deplatformed all over, you uh, ATR quote-unquote communities uh, with your um, shut-it-down campaign trying to police everybody all the way back to you candle merchants. What the fuck have you done for anybody? Have you done anything for anybody? You know, we always fucking did community um, work out of our store. We always organized clothes drives and, and food drives for the homeless every year. It's like, any of you fucking do anything like that for, for any community? Um, it seems like most of y'all in all of these communities just sit there attacking each other all fucking day. Mm-hmm. You know, this is fighting over fucking breadcrumbs while your rulers up on the hill are eating fucking cake. Well, we over here at Wittershins, we want cake. And we're going to get some king cake. Yeah. Because it's king cake season, you know. Um, you all are not crusaders. You are not our saviors. Um, you're the shit that we fled from high school from uh, with, with magic. And uh, it's all a bunch of clicks. And I, I said this back when we were in the fucking Bay Area, man. You're just like fucking high school, man. You're a bunch of fucking clicks. And clicks backbiting each other all the fucking time now unbeknownst to all of you apparently uh even though it's been so in your fucking face we have a QAnon christian fucking craze going on in this fucking country and they are the craziest christians we've ever known and like i said you know fake lore or not when we believed that nine million witches had been killed at the hands of the Christians, we were tight. We were in solidarity. We had our witch wars here and there, sure. We didn't have it all the fucking time like this. They still out there. Whether it was nine million or fucking nine thousand, it still fucking happened. They're still fucking out there. And now they got crazy shit like fucking QAnon. They came along and they took away the rights of gay people and women's reproductive rights in the workplace, um, all under the guise of their religious freedom. And it happened. It flew. They got away with it. Gay people ain't in the fucking Bible, dudes. None of that shit's in the fucking Bible. And it doesn't say thou shalt not give women birth control in their fucking health insurance. It does not say that in the fucking Bible. Um, but after King James, uh, in the King James Bibles, it does say thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Now, whether that's, you know, that, that is a mistranslation, we know that, but that doesn't matter. It actually says that in their fucking book. It ain't a huge stretch for these fucking crazy fucks one of them to fucking say it's a violation of their religious rights for you to force them to suffer a witch to live. And they have fucking guns, they have mobs, they can storm fucking capitals, man. Um, if ever we needed to fucking recognize an external fucking enemy and fucking pull our ranks together, it's now. But we won't because we suck. And that's the name of that tune, man. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I, I took all, all of the, the ranting. I know. It's okay. No, I'm not. Do you have, have anything no, to add? No, I mean, I was going to, you know, like add to what you're saying, but I actually, I was in the middle of doing something that I remembered I needed to do. So, so that's good because you prevented dead air. 
Yeah. So thank you. The dead air is uh, uh, a blasphemy. I can't, yeah. You can't have that. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to rock out the end of the show. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Really quick. I guess since we've been talking about it. WitchCon, okay. dudes. Okay. WitchCon. You got you to yeah. check out WitchCon. That was what that was all about. Um, it's coming, God, Jesus, right around the corner, March 5th to the 7th. Join the largest online magical conference in the world, bringing the magic to you. Uh, featuring over 100 witches and conjurers coming to you live stream video from across the globe. Um March 5th to the 7th, Brian Kane, Christian Day, and the Hex Education Network present WitchCon Online, featuring over 100 classes by over 100 witches, conjurers from all over the globe, ready to share their time-honored wisdom and witchery with beginners and advanced practitioners alike. So WitchCon Online presenters are the preeminent masters of the magical arts and hail from across the rainbow of spectrum, spectrum of occult and spiritual practices. And... Uh, you got to check it out because it says the registration's limited to a 1,000 attendees, y'all. Yes. You got to get on that. I've been plugging this on TikTok, too. So them kids are coming, too. Um, it's not only is the largest, it's the cheapest. And, Nin- 95 bucks. And you, you can revisit it. You can watch and, it and later watch any of them for as years. As many times as you want. As long as Crowdcast exists, um, you can watch the archives. Yeah, because you obviously won't be able to, like, you know, watch everybody over that weekend. There's too many people, so you're yeah. going to have to watch some of it after the fact. But you'll be able to yeah. do that forever. Exactly. Exactly. It's 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 epic. And so you got to go to WitchCon, uh, witchcon.com and you got to check it. So it's like these people that were complaining because they wanted to have the WitchCon and didn't really have a plan or anything, they didn't even own a fucking domain name. Christian went and got witchcon.com. <laughs> Right away, it's like you know. I don't know. You wanna, you know, you, you wanna throw your horses behind a guy that gets shit done, or a bunch of fucking hippies with pipe dreams. Uh, you do you. <laughs> Go over to witchcon dot com and see that list of presenters. It's epic. There is an online vending thing. There's going to be a way for us to all to socialize between classes and stuff I think there's through Zoom. Be some kind of meet and greet. Yeah, like a meet and greet kind of thing. There's rituals, drumming, all kinds of shit. Get over to witchcon dot com <coughs> and don't fucking make me tell you that again. God damn it, Wittersins, we're out.
the little hand is on the two. The big hand is pointing at you. Now, what time is that? My clock glows in the dark. What does yours do? marbles in my hand I want to go down to the store I want to go where God knows best I want to go to Sunday school Jesus loves me yes I know I mean it The little hand is on the two. The big hand is pointing at you. Now, what time is that? You tell me. Sometimes I like to wind up my clock so the hands will point in different special ways. Sometimes I like to wind up my clock so the hands will point in different special ways. Everybody knows that! Yeah. 